What's going on everybody? Welcome for the first time. We're back to another Is God For It Gets Me video. And what I wanted to talk about today is simply this. Always remember that the devil always wants to be like God. Everything that you probably see that's going on in the world today, if you look at the agendas, you look at the direction that certain industries, certain establishments are taking society, the way that it's being moved can almost be traced back to that one source um, in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, where it actually outlines how Lucifer fell from heaven and the decrees that Lucifer actually made um, to God in terms of his own plans for the world. And one of the things is that I will be like the most high. He didn't say I'll become because he knew he knows he cannot become, but he says I will be like the most high. So the devil is probably God's number one fan at this moment because he really wants to be like him, but he's causing a perversion of everything that we actually think of. We actually look at the actions in the Bible when we look at today in terms of all the you know, uh, the things that we see online, they, they call them conspiracy theories. I don't like to call them conspiracy theories at all. I just call it connecting dots. And we see that people are talking about, let's say, for example, in the music industry, we're talking about sacrifices. You know, this artist has to sacrifice his, you know, family member in order to reach that next level. We just looked at the Travis Scott uh, concert tragedy, and many people are speculating that that's been a, a satanic ritual sacrifice. All right, let's assume all those things are true, just for the sake of this, this conversation. If we look at what God did in the Old Testament, where he had humans actually um, use animals, all right? There had to be a level of atonement uh, or atonement for the sins of the people because Christ hasn't came back yet at this moment. They didn't have Jesus Christ like we have today. So there was there were things that had to be done differently. And I'm speculating, I, have to, I admit I have to still do deeper studies on this, but my speculation is that, that the Lord had them use animals because... I don't because when we look at human beings like we're we're sinful beings and I know this world is is corrupted as sin this is a fallen world so this this whole world is sin and of itself but I think there was a there was a purity in the the actual blood that was being sacrificed with animals because they didn't carry that sin like we do right now because we disobey God um in that time in the garden with Adam and Eve and Adam eating of the you know the fruit after being, you know, because he loved Eve. I believe Adam loved Eve so much that he would even go to great lengths to actually disobey God in order to satisfy Eve. And we can actually see that sort of behavior even going on today with certain men and doing things for women and, and all these other things and stuff. But that's going to be a whole nother video where I actually talk about the spiritual downfall of the woman. But if we think about that, though, uh, that sacrificial part, God required sacrifices. We think about today, what, what Lucifer, what Satan is actually requiring of, you know, the people. And actually, I'm feeling in my spirit right now that uh, Satan was called Lucifer. That that was his name before he fell. All right. That was his name before he fell and what he was called. But then he got he had a name change when she actually did fall, make the fall from heaven and his disobedience and falling into sin and became known as the adversary, which is uh, I think it's the Hebrew translation of satan the the adversary the enemy i could be very much so wrong but this is from what i'm remembering from my studies right now at this moment so we always have to remember that lucifer that the devil that satan wants to be like god everything hangs on to that in terms of the actions of the devil even if you even look if we continue to look at the word and we look at with moses Moses and the staff where, you know, Moses did one thing and then the Pharaoh had his minions, his magicians, his sorcerers try to mimic that. And then, you know, it was almost like, you know, look, uh, whatever you could do, I can have my sorcerers and everything else do just the same. And, and they they matched it up until they got to the serpent and the serpent when Moses threw his staff down and the serpent and his staff turned into a, a snake. His snake ate the snake of the that the sorcerers and the magicians made um and that sort of thing so we can actually use that as an example and be able to take and understand that lucifer will always try to mimic god always look around you and and, and think about what's going on um, we talk about everything and we're attaching the word satanic to it did god do it first and you might have to ask yourself the second question is this a perversion 
of what God originally has done. When we look at, um, and this is, this actually goes into my market or beast study, which sign up to the email list below in, in order to be the first one to get into that because I am writing a book in terms of the market of beast. But when you even think about that, you have to consider the fact that the devil wants to be like God. So if we have Jesus Christ, if God sent his only begotten son as an ultimate sacrifice and we have to accept him for salvation, then we can expect that same thing in the end times that we have to accept. And God, even in the book of Revelation, it talks about the saints being sealed, having the seal of God on inside on top of their foreheads. And I may be misquoting that right now, but we carry a seal. We're, our spirits are sealed up. So when we talk about the mark of the beast and we talk about what's going to happen during that time, you're going to have to carry a mark. You're going to have to carry the seal of Satan. And right now, being in this flesh and being in sin, we already carry the seal of sin on top of us. The only way to get rid of that seal is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ so he can work on the inside of us. All right. So we can have that Holy Ghost. So we can have that Holy Spirit on the inside that is working to make us more acceptable to constantly be in a state of um, not perishing, should not perish. That's a key word, should not. Because even though if I even if I am a Christian, I still put myself in harm's way if I don't fulfill um, the purpose of God, the purpose that the Lord has me, even though I am saved. I still have a mission. I still have an assignment here on earth. And I think that gets overlooked a lot of the times. So you have to look, think about that. If you think about what the Bible says and, and how we are to behave and how we are to do certain things as Christians, you can expect a perversion of that with the devil. So when the end times come, you can actually think about there will be a certain, there, that mark is going to have to change your nature. And this is something I believe based on my studies, because when you carry the mark and it says that if you um get the mark, you, you lose redemption. But why is that? Let's take the spiritual mysticism, mysticalness away from it. Let's look at it from a practical standpoint. Well, why would I be irredeemable? Is it because just like in Genesis 6, when the um, Nephilim came and was the Nephilim came, was having sex with these women and giving birth to, I'm sorry, the fallen angels came and they were giving birth to these women and giving having these Nephilim children, these, these hybrids. And then we talk about Nimrod who became a mighty hunter, something totally different that wasn't human anymore from what I believe, then what's going to happen when we actually take this mark? It has to be something deeper than just a microchip or something like that, but it's going to be something that's going to change our humanity on a very uh, practical level where we're going to be starting. It's going to be looking very weird. It's going to start looking like some X-Men um, show out here. It's going to start looking like some um, V with Rowdy Piper. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look very weird during those times. And you have to think about all the other stuff too, where we have the influx of superhero movies, the rise of human hybrids, that sort of thing, that's, that narrative that's coming up. If we even think about that show that's on Netflix, uh, where the boy is like a deer or something like that, he's mixed with an animal. Uh, I can't even remember the name of it, but somebody uh, put it down in the comments for me. But we have to think about these things. So, if we have the original that God has put before us in his word, what's going to be the perversion of that? These are just some connections and some questions that I always make and ask. And I wonder what direction we're going from from there. But always remember this. And in conclusion, this is the nature of this video, the message. Always remember that Satan wants to be like God. What is the perverted version I'm looking at? And what's the original version in terms of how God actually made it? Think about that. That's going to be it for this video. Uh, if you want to hear more about this, then let me know in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to build on top of this topic even further. God bless y'all. See you in the next video.